so far our code ran quite smoothly. But what happens if something goes wrong, if there is an exception? How is our API going to respond? Let's have a look at that. Let's go to bands controller and in our get bands action, let's just throw an exception. So it's going to be just a new exception and I'll just call it testing exceptions. All right, so let's run this. And in the postman, we'll go to API slash bands and that will trigger the exception. So the exception was thrown. Now let's continue. I'll click continue. And we are back in our postman and here is the exception. And we get back the whole exception stack. And that's because we are in development environment. But obviously you wouldn't want this in production. Because this is an information that a regular user can do nothing with and a malicious user can abuse it. So let's close this and let's change the environment to production. Let's go to a project and properties. And in the debug, I'll change development to production. So let's run this. And let's run this request again. The exception was thrown. I'll click continue. And here we are in the postman and we get 500 internal server error with no information at all. So this is much better in a production. But our message that we attach to our exception is not showing. And that's because that's only for the development environment. In order to use exception messages for the production environment, we need to create an exception handler. So let's do that. And the exception handler is set up in startup.cs. So let's open that and we'll go to our configure method. You can see that here we have the if statement and check if the application is in development. And if so, we'll use the exception page. However, if it is in production, let's create an else statement. We want to create a custom message. And in order to do that, we need to create an exception handler. So we'll go to our app dot and we will use exception handler. And here we need to pass in a lambda that is the error handling path. So let's just create a lambda expression. I'll call it app builder. And inside we will write the exception handler message. So let's go to our app builder. And first we will run it. And when it runs, we will create the status code and the error message. So in async and in the Lambda, we need to pass in the delegate. So I'll just call it C and we will create a status code. So we'll go to C dot response and we'll pick up the status code. And the status code for this is 500, which is the server error. And then we will write the custom message. So we'll use the await since we are using async and we'll go to our C and again to our response. And this time we will write async and we will write the message itself. So first let's bring in the namespace for write async and that's the microsoft.aspnetcore.http and the message can simply say something went horribly wrong, try again. So this is our custom exception handler that will be only used in production. So currently we are in production, so let's run this. And let's run this API call again. So the exception is thrown, I'll click continue. And you can see now we have our custom message displayed here and we still get the 500 internal server error. So this is what's going to be shown in the production. All right, so let's close this and I'm going to just comment this out and I'll go back 
and reset everything to development again. So instead of production, I'll change it to development. So this is how we would handle exceptions in production. And next, let's have a look at one special API parameter and that is head.